Steel equipment has had what I would call a legendary reputation over the last few decades, and I think it's well-deserved. However, do you need to buy their top-tier line of equipment to get it, or can you still get that reputation when buying their entry-level stuff as well? I know I'm going to ruffle a few feathers on this one, so get ready for it. You may not like what I have to say. In today's video, we're going to look at this hated steel FS38 string trimmer, and the problem is that it starts, but it's not running at full speed, which makes it pretty tough to do any real work. Now, I've already made a video about this trimmer, and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. And I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about the perceived reputation around buying any steel product. Now, over the years, I've worked on a fair amount of stuff, and you can see most of the items I've worked on by looking at my library of videos I've made in the last several years. Now, I didn't film that much at the beginning because I didn't have an interest to do so, but the majority is on film for all to see. In those videos, you're going to find that only a small percentage of them have anything to do with steel equipment, but why is that? If they're so great, then why don't more people have them? Is it because they cost too much? Now, just like most other brands, they do have some very expensive items and some low-cost entry-level stuff as well, but are people touting how good their entry-level stuff is, or are they talking about their more expensive stuff? So here's the issue. I've never heard someone say that my cheap steel trimmer or their most affordable blower they make outshines most other brands no matter which price point we're talking about. What I typically hear is that their particular model, which happens to be the mid to high end price range, is a lot better and more reliable than any lesser models of a different brand. So what they're doing is comparing their very expensive steel trimmer, blower, or chainsaw to models that are in a lower price category. To put this in another way, they're comparing their mid to high end luxury car or truck to a subcompact, a base model sedan, or to your favorite people mover, a minivan. It's simply not a fair comparison in my book, but we all do it quite often. In fact, I've done it as well. It's just human nature. So let's make it fair then. Instead of comparing an FS131R, which costs an amazing $490 to a mid-grade Troy-built trimmer, but instead compare it to a Red Max or a Honda trimmer in the same price category. What you end up with is a comparison of three extremely good trimmers that's going to more than likely get the job done, and hopefully you'll be extremely satisfied by your purchase of any one of these items. So the question now is, which one of the almost $500 trimmers are you going to buy? Now, this is where advertising, word of mouth, or even brand loyalty steps in. I'm going to say this. If you were to close your eyes and pick at random between the three I mentioned, I don't think you'll make a bad choice. But since choice is one of the only freedoms we get to have in this market, that choice is very important to you. I hate to tell you this, but my choice would be none of them because none of these trimmers are in my price range. Now, realistically, who's going to buy a string trimmer that costs more than a new set of tires for your car or truck? For me, I'd buy a trimmer that was in the $200 category instead. So let's change it and pick some that are in a price range that most sane customers can agree on. Let's choose a sensible steel trimmer this time. This time, I'm going to pick an FS56 RCE at a price of $230. All we need now are two more trimmers to compare to. Now, at a different local hardware store, I can choose between an Echo SRM225 or right next to it, I can pick a Troy Belt TB304H, which is a four-stroke trimmer. So between the three of them, I'm going to rule out the Troy Belt, not because I don't like it, but because it's heavy and it's limited on how you can use it. So of the two left over, which one would I choose? 
So surprisingly, I would take either one. I think both are great options, and you can't go wrong picking between the two of them, but if I was forced to choose one, I'd go with the Echo, only because I think the Echo is easier to use. But if for some reason they were out of stock, I wouldn't mind taking the Steel either. So do I have an issue with Steel quality then? Not at all. I think its build quality is just as good as any of the top brands. Just don't ask me what I think about the Troy Built's quality. So what about their blowers? What do you think about them? That's simple. I feel the same way. I feel that if you compare their BG series blowers to those in the same price range, I don't think you can go wrong with choosing it over an Echo or a Shindaiwa. I just think it's unfair when you compare a mid-range BG series to a Poland blower that's half the price. So here comes the bigger question, their chainsaws. What do I think about them? So here's the deal, I think every brand has a piece of equipment they're really known for and for steel that would have to be their chainsaws. Now if you thought buying a Husqvarna 455 Rancher for well over $520 was a lot, then you haven't looked into the $2,000 plus price range then. Both steel and Husqvarna have some and to make a choice between either brand would be almost impossible for me because let's face it, that's a lot of money. So which steel chainsaw would I buy? If I had to choose one, I think I'd go with the MS-180, and the reason is because I think it's a good value, and because I know their reputation is built around their saws. So even if I did choose their MS-171, I think I'd be happy with it. And even though I'm a bona fide Echo user, I know steel would be a better choice, at least in this category. So it would seem that reputation does work on me to help me make my choices, but then again, I'm not immune to general perception, and the perception is you can't go wrong when picking a steel chainsaw. So what's the point of this whole argument then? Well, this is when things get a little bit tense. Remember, I told you there are some brands that are known for specific machines. So what about their other machines then? Well, sometimes things don't go so well. Take, for instance, this FS38 trimmer. There's a reason why it's the cheapest one they make. To help keep costs down, it's made overseas and not the part of the world you want it to be made in. You then end up with a product that's fairly low in ratings and has mediocre reviews. I guess that's the price you get when making something affordable. So am I saying that this move to make a steel trimmer that everyone can afford was a poor choice? Not at all. I think it was a very wise choice, in fact. Yes, the trimmer head has its issues, and if you abuse the maintenance on it, it may have some issues, but what happens if you don't skimp on the maintenance and actually take care of it? What's going to happen? Aside from a few lemons here and there, I think you'll end up with a decent trimmer. Just don't think it's going to do any heavy lifting because that's not what it's designed to do. So would I ever buy a new and use one of the cheapest steel trimmers on the market? You bet I would. However, you are talking to a certified penny pincher, so I doubt I'd ever buy one new. 
So my question is, if you don't already have one, would you consider buying a new piece of equipment from Steel? And if so, what would it be? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.